Hello everybody, I'm Richard Oldner and welcome to the channel. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all of this testing. Here is our question for today. Turbocharged LS, ported heads. Can you make more power with ported heads on a turbo combination? The answer, to end the suspense, is yes, you can make more power. The question isn't, could you make more power? The question is, should you make more power? In order to talk about what happens when we modify the NA version, like with ported heads or cams or anything, we need to first take a look at what's going on when we run a stock one. So we have a stock 5.3 liter from the wrecking yard, stock heads, cam, intake, basically everything stock. We put injectors in it and we have a Holly HP management system and then we ran it under boost. I just wanted to show you that the stock cam and the stock heads and all that, they, they obviously work under boost. So this is our stock combination, 352 horsepower, 375 to 380 foot pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we ran a turbo on it. Let's go ahead and take a look here at our turbo. Two bar map sensor, 75 pound injectors. This was a single precision turbo. We had an air to water intercooler on it. Uh, no adjustable controller, basically just running it on the wastegate. As you can see, it makes the same shape curve as the stock camshaft did and the stock heads and stock intake manifold because that's what boost does as long as you have a consistent amount of boost. Now we could run the boost up even further. This was around eight pounds. We could run the boost up even further. This thing was making 550 horsepower at 7.7 .7 or 7.8 pounds and was making 590 foot-pounds of torque. We could run the boost up and make more power, but the problem is you start getting diminishing returns. You have to run a lot of boost because your stock motor isn't really making very much power. So if we put a camshaft in this and bring our stock power up from 350 to over 400, 420, 430, 440, somewhere in that range, we'll make even more power under boost at every given boost level. So the gains that we pick up 60, 70 horsepower or whatever, naturally aspirated are now going to turn into 120, 130, 140 horsepower under boost. That's why we modify this. And on all the LS combinations, I recommend definitely putting a camshaft in, but at what point should we maybe start thinking about cylinder heads and to that extent also intake manifolds. So let's take a look and see what happens when we put a camshaft in these and how much more power we get. And then we'll step things up to an even wilder combination. And then at the end, we can talk about, now we know that we can do this, but should we? We'll go through this really quickly to illustrate what happens when we do modifications to these motors and make more power. We'll show you what happens when we add boost to that. So this was a stock L33, an aluminum motor that had made 365 horsepower with headers and basically everything else stock and 389 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we put the Brian Tui Racing Truck Norris cam in it. For instance, you can see we got a big change in the power curve. We got another video up on this that details this if you want to take a look at that. But here's what happened when we added boost. You can see we're now making way over 600 horsepower, 630 something horsepower. Yeah, 33 horsepower, similar amounts of torque, 625 foot pounds, because we know that the power curve now kind of mirrors what happens with the NA curve. And the same thing happens if we, anything that we do to upgrade the naturally aspirated power, which would include ported cylinder heads, would include other intake manifolds. I've shown when we run short runner intake manifolds, what it does when we run long runner intake manifolds, lots and lots of intake manifold tests up and also cylinder head stuff. So if we improve the power output of our naturally aspirated motor, we're going to get good gains whenever we add boost, which is why we always tell you you need to put a camshaft in it. But the question remains is at what point should we start thinking about porting the heads? Let's take a look. Now that we've demonstrated that you can add boost to a stock cam LS, you can add boost to a cam to LS. Let's take a look and see what happens when we add boost to a modified LS that's making more NA power and we're going to figure out the results here. So this was the big bang motor that I did for truck and magazine. This was a 5.3 liter and it had a stock bottom end with ring gap, but we did add heads, cam and intake. And I know what you're thinking, Richard, we want to see what the test is of just cylinder heads. Well, the cylinder heads on this combination were worth about 35 horsepower. And I know because I've tested lots and lots of these things individually. And the biggest gain that you get for it, especially on a 5.3, is from the camshaft. And then the intake and the cylinder head kind of split the remaining gains, depending on what head you're starting with and what head you're ending with and what intake you're starting with and what intake you're ending with. But here's the thing. 
When we improve the power output of our naturally aspirated combination, like we did here, and in fact, I'm gonna show you exactly how much we improved over a stock 5.3 liter. The stock 5.3, like we showed before, 350-ish horsepower and 370 or 80 foot-pounds. Well, we've jumped this thing all the way up over 500 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 443 foot-pounds. So we've improved the naturally aspirated combination dramatically, and I wanna show you the benefit of that because when we improve the power output of our naturally aspirated combination, now everything that we do under boost is multiplied. So let's take a look. We're starting off with around 500 horsepower NA. Here's what happens when we add just five and a half pounds of boost. I'm gonna go ahead and move myself over here. <laughs> At five and a half pounds of boost, we're almost making 700 horsepower. That gives you an idea of the benefit of starting off with something that's a powerful NA combination. We had very little boost and all of a sudden we're making some fairly serious horsepower. So 700 horsepower at five and a half pounds. Let's go up and boost even more now. So this was 13 pounds and voila, we're over 900 horsepower. In fact, we're up at 900 and almost 30 horsepower, 928 horsepower. And then to push this thing up over into the four digit power level was very, very easy. At a little over 15 pounds, we're over a thousand horsepower. And that's the benefit of running a combination, improving the power output by doing things like cylinder head, ported cylinder heads, a good camshaft and intake manifold. And yes, I know we can also get to these kinds of power levels just with a camshaft and adding boost. But the question is, when should I modify the cylinder heads on a turbo combination? And there isn't an all in on you should never do it, you should just add boost, or you should always do it and try to improve the output. The answer is obvious and always is in between. Because I didn't want to leave you without showing you exactly what a ported cylinder head does when that is the only thing we change. Because let's face it, that's probably why you came here. Um, we're really not talking about what it does because we know, judging from all the other tests that I've shown you, when we upgrade the camshaft or intake manifold, or in this case the cylinder head, it always improves the NA power. And then if it does improve the NA power, it is definitely going to improve the power under boost. But I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. This was a turbocharged test motor. It was a 4.8 liter. It had our forged piston in it. It had um, the stock 706 head. It had a, our DNA GT45. It had an air water intercooler, our single setup with dual turbo smart waste gates and all that. And what we did was run it first with the stock 706 heads, 83 pound injectors. And we ran this around seven pounds of boost and we produced 524 horsepower and 529 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened after we upgraded the stock 706 heads to a set of trick flow heads. Let's see here. And you can see we picked up quite a bit of power. We'd made no changes to the turbo or the wastegate or anything. All we did was do, do the head swap to the TrickFlow 205 heads. Power jumped up to 574 horsepower and 566 foot-pounds of torque. So we went from 523 to 574. So we picked up 50 horsepower just from the head swap. And this is also with a with a stock camshaft. This wasn't even with a combination that had some kind of aftermarket cam that would better be able to take advantage of this. So we know now that a ported head is definitely worth power. This was swapping over to an aftermarket head. We could get the same kind of gain if we ran like the total engine airflow stage two uh, CNC ported 706 heads. So we know that a ported head works. The question is not can we make more power, but should we use the head to make more power? We'll talk about that a little bit. Here is my recommendation for ported heads on a turbo LS. If you're looking at a sub 1000 horsepower combination, I normally don't recommend upgrading the cylinder heads. What I recommend is that you put a cam springs and you want a thousand horsepower, put a thousand horsepower turbo on it and then away you go and all of a sudden you're making a thousand horsepower. It is in the no man's land between a thousand horsepower and 1500 horsepower where you would start looking at porting a stock head to get more airflow, to get more power, to make that power as we saw at a lower boost level. That's where you would start worrying about, well, what is the thickness of my deck? Am I gonna distort that? Is it not gonna seal my head gasket? And quite honestly, I think in that range, you can get away with 
doing a ported ported stock head even in that range and not have to worry about the deck thickness. So we've made 13, 1400 horsepower without any problem with stock heads and stock deck thicknesses. I think that this internet myth is spread a lot. Not that there isn't truth to that. There, a thicker deck is definitely going to be better. An aftermarket head is definitely going to be better than a factory head. My point is, I think a lot of people don't know what that point is. <laughs> I doubt anybody in the industry can exactly pinpoint to at what cylinder pressure, it's not going to be a boost level, it's going to be a cylinder pressure level, what cylinder pressure level that actually occurs at. I think a lot of guys miss on their tune and detonate the thing, have spiky cylinder pressures, and and blame the lack of deck thickness for their problem. I'd like to see somebody actually have some data that says, hey, at 1,348 foot-pounds of torque and that attending cylinder pressure, that's the point that you start losing head gasket seal. And did they do everything that it was needed to have head gasket seal with the stock head? Did they have CA625 head studs? Did they have the right RA number both on the deck surface of the block and the deck surface of the head? Did they not have too much timing in it? Did they have enough fuel in it? Did they do all the things that they need so they could exactly pinpoint that the problem was the deck surface? I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.